If you have an interest in horses and love learning more about horses, the horse industry, teaching, or even managing your own horse business, then you're in the right place. We would love you to join us on our mission, which is to improve the lives of horses around the world through the education of riders, handlers, and trainers. So get comfortable, listen in, and enjoy. This has been another episode sponsored by Online Horse College. If you haven't had a look at the wide variety of equine-specific accredited courses, then go to onlinehorsecollege.com and I'll see you over there. Okay, so it's the beginning of the month again and we're ready for another Horse Chats with Sophie Barrington from Archer Creative, who are the experts in equine marketing. Sophie's going to talk about the 10 lessons for search marketing this month. She'll talk, first of all, five reasons why your website isn't ranking on high on Google and then five ways to improve your website ranking. So if people have got search engine marketing, it's just a huge puzzle. Sophie will explain it to you in just her really good down-to-earth terms that even horse people can understand. How are you today, Sophie? I'm great, thanks. Glennis, how are you? Yeah, really good, really good. Sophie, this whole search engine optimization, search marketing, everything else, it's a huge riddle. It's, It's like a specialist area, but I'm sure you're going to be able to explain it to us so that we can understand not just why it's not ranking, but then how to improve the website ranking and get it going. Mm -hmm, Definitely. Search engine marketing and search engine optimization, which we often term SEM and SEO, they're definitely a bit of a beast, um, but certainly we'll break it down. Good, good, good. All right. So the first one, we're talking about the five reasons why your website isn't ranking high in Google. The first one is your website has been penalized by Google. Now, tell us about why we would have our website penalized by Google. Mm. Mm. So thankfully, the good news is this is becoming less common uh, as business owners and certainly their website developers they work with uh, become much more familiar with what are ethical or unethical SEO practices. So essentially, two of the common reasons why a website would be penalized by Google, one is keyword stuffing, which really is a bit of an old school uh, SEO, SEM message. And the other is unethical link building. Now, I'll do, I'll delve into keywords and links a little bit further on in this chat, but essentially unethical link building is putting in a whole number of um, ingenuine and not necessarily reputable links um, for the purpose of bulking out the website. All right, all right. Well, that's some um, two things that we need to avoid. We'd actually have to know how to do keyword stuffing and how to do link building, but we'll talk about those a bit later. But I suppose if you're just thinking of doing the right thing all the time, you're not going to Mm. come across that, are you? That's right. That's right. So it's just really important to remember that when you are looking at search engine optimization, search engine marketing, uh, now we're going to particularly be talking about SEO this evening uh, as opposed to search engine marketing, SEM. But essentially, if you're working with a reputable agency or individual developer on your website, you know, if they're reputable and qualified, it's highly unlikely they're going to go down the route of what are called black hat SEO practices. Mm -hmm. The reality is that Google is becoming more savvy in uncovering these unethical practices, uh, but also more severe in penalizing websites that are built on them. So a website that has been penalized by Google, which which thankfully I think is becoming much rarer, um, in the end of the day, it's going to struggle to improve its rankings. In fact, it might actually be impossible um, to recover if you receive a penalty from Google. So it's really important to avoid doing anything uh, that falls out of the realm of what's appropriate uh, from an SEO perspective. Um, Anyone that gets a a penalty or penalised by Google, they're most likely going to be faced with the prospect of having to rebuild their website from scratch. So it's just not worth um, the rush to a quick quick, uh, result, um, I think is why people walk that fine line. Okay, okay. All right then, so... The next one we've got is your website incorporates links ineffectively. Yeah, so this is where we'll delve into a bit more about keywords and links, just to well, obviously um, increase uh, you know the layperson's knowledge about what all this terminology means. Yeah. So I guess also what I want to add here as well is that if you're looking at doing any form of SEO or SEM for that matter, and that means you know your ultimate goal is to rank number one on Google uh, for your particular website for the keywords that are important to your business, 
Uh, we've got to remember it's a long-term strategy. So again, it's never about the quick result, um, particularly SEO when, when you're looking at things from an organic perspective um, and not necessarily paying for that marketing on Google AdWords. It's going to be a part of your business. Uh, we're talking, you know, a 12-month commitment uh, for most of the time if you really want to see some serious results. Uh, so it is a lot of term strategy. That's really important for the connection. So obviously, every business, you know, wants to rank number one. Um, but the aim of SEO is to at least fall within the top five search results on the first page of Google um, for the keywords that you're targeting. So just to explain what a keyword or a key phrase actually is, now, these keywords are essentially search terms or phrases um, that your potential customers are typing into Google. So again, when we talk about marketing, it's always thinking about the end goal in mind and thinking about your customers. You know, what are they going to be typing into Google uh, to try and find a product or a service that you offer? So keyword research is an important place to start, and you can do that within Google. You can do it on your own. You can certainly look up YouTube videos to get your head around how to do it. It's not too yep. difficult. Okay. Or if you're working with someone professional, you can obviously get them to do that research for you. But a keyword or what might be a key phrase, there might be a number of words together, um, that essentially is based on what terms people are using uh, on Google. And essentially, so looking at links being used ineffectively on a website, so basically keywords and links actually work together on a website to show Google that your content is relevant and popular. So I'll just break this down. So keywords, now these are called on-page factors. Um, don't get too caught up in the terminology, but essentially on-page factors such as keywords, they show Google that the individual web page and obviously the website in its entirety um, are actually incorporating the search terms that customers are using in Google. So those keywords, you want to capture those in a multitude of ways on the page. So that would be in the copy itself, um, in, in the headings and the subheadings as well. And then if you're working with a professional website developer or SEO consultant or marketing agency um, for that matter, then you also look at some other on-page factors which take those keywords into other areas a little bit more behind the scenes, um, so to speak, on the website. And then links, and by these I mean inbound links. So an inbound link is a link from someone else's website pointing to your own. So for example, someone might have read a blog post and they've referenced it on their website. So that becomes an inbound link. It's coming back into your website. And inbound links are really important if they're quality and if they're genuine. So often when people are using links ineffectively, uh, they may not have enough links pointing to their website or they may simply have um, links that are no longer working or they might have links that are from uh, not the best sources. And, and that can go into a bit of a grey area and possibly lead into the penalties I was talking about before if those are built unethically or if they're not actually genuine links. Um, mm -hmm. That's where you can get into a bit of trouble. So again, as you can imagine, Glennis, you know, someone trying to build up links back to their website, say, for example, um, from the press or from bloggers or from customers, it's not going to happen in a day. It's going to take, you know, probably 12 months to get a number of really good links. Okay. And it really needs to become, you know, part of your business practices, trying to get those good quality links back to your site. Okay. Okay, good. I was going to say, how, if someone's just started off with a brand new website, how do they get them back? Mm. But as you said, if it's not going to happen overnight, but we'll, um, we can talk about that and it's over a period of time. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, that's right. Okay, now the next one you've got is your content is too thin. You know what, tell us a little bit about the content. I'm presuming content mm -hmm. is like the um, words that you're putting on the page, you know, if you've got some articles or anything. That's yeah, right, yeah. exactly. That's right, yeah, the written words or the copy. So we often refer to it as copy, um, but essentially copy is the written words on your website. So they are not only the headings and the subheadings, but obviously all of the information um, that is physically written on a website is the content. And then once that content's there, should it stay there? Should it be changed? Should it be added to? Is that something that we're working on over that 12 months is adding to that written copy or written text on the page? 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So with with content, um, you know, I am obviously being a marketer. I talk about this all the time. It's really important to um, regularly update your website. Now, that isn't just for SEO purposes. That's also to make sure that you know every page on your website is accurate and um, and still has information that obviously is relevant to your potential customers. Um, but it also means actually adding content. So by that, often one of the, one of the most popular forms to do that is with a blog post, and certainly more than one. So numerous mm. blog posts added at least once a month. Some websites, some companies do do them once a week, once a fortnight. It obviously will depend on your resources or if you're outsourcing copywriting, that's relatively easy um, to achieve with once a week blog posts. Um, but essentially, content is is really important um, to you know to factor into SEO. So, when I talk about content being too thin, essentially a good rule of thumb for ranking uh, again, this is factoring in those keywords. So. That those keywords will obviously appear within the copy on your website and the keywords might change from page to page. Um, so, for example, a blog post could actually focus on a particular keyword and then essentially um, other pages of your website might focus more generally on the keywords that would describe your product or your service that people might be searching for in Google. So, you might have a different strategy um, for each page of your website, not just looking at your website as one whole. It is broken down into many parts um, but essentially that rule of thumb we're normally looking at about 300 words minimum uh, per page on a website uh, now this does vary some some websites will have thousands of words on pages other websites might have less it will come down to what the strategy uh, is dependent on um, and also with the keyword or keywords that you're trying to rank for um, some keywords are simply more competitive and are obviously going to be tougher because you do have competitors who are also trying to rank for a similar product or a similar service, uh, for example. So there are going to be instances where some websites it's going to be much more valuable to have a lot of copy or a lot of content. Um, that being said, I do try and stay clear of doing too much copy on a website. As you can imagine, you know, people get a bit fatigued reading on a screen. And, you know, if someone's coming to your website and they want to find something really quickly, they might not really want to read through, you know, thousands of words of copy. So you do want to still get to the point. And this is where blog posts can be really helpful because someone coming to a blog, they're looking for information they're probably a bit more prepared to read and digest more intensive information um, as opposed to on your home page or a product page. They just want to get the information they're looking for without having to go through and find it. All right, then. So if we just take the example of someone who's got a writing school, they do lessons. If their content's too thin, like their website might get set up with different types of lessons, um, even if they have any stabling or adjustment as a complementary income for the lessons, the types of blog posts would include the keywords. So if someone's looking for horse riding lessons, they might give tips on preparing for your horse riding lessons and then that would be a blog post. Am I on the right track? Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly right. So what you have to remember um, at the end of the day, this applies to content in general. So the golden rule of copywriting, it, it applies before actually breaking down, you know, all of the copy on your website into keywords. You know, keywords are obviously the foundation of your strategy. You need to have your keywords in there and your links in there and have those working effectively. But at the end of the day, it's about creating quality content, and that means it's content that's going to be valued, um, particularly by your customer base. So that's a perfect way to do it. So if you do have a local riding school, uh, and you're obviously trying to rank for keywords around horse riding, horse adjustment, uh, you might have the location mentioned in those keywords as well. You can actually integrate um, those really easily into blog posts that are helpful and informative and provide um, a great source of, of that information um, to a prospective customer. That's a really great way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, now, this is outside the scope of our, our chat um, today, but essentially there is also what's called local SEO. And I, I won't go into detail on that. Um, I do have a blog actually on my own website, archercreator.net.au, um, which I developed quite some time ago. Um, but if you are a business with a brick and mortar location, if you're a retail store or a produce store or indeed a writing school, um, there are elements of local SEO that you'll want to think about because you want to make sure that customers in your area 
know that you're there and they know how to come and find you. If you are a retailer where you might sell products um, all around Australia or even all around the globe, local SEO isn't going to be as relevant, but it's be on the spread of this chat, so I won't go into too much detail. We can always maybe look at it a little bit further down the line. Yes, I was going to say we can always put it on the agenda for one of our other <laughs> chats at the beginning of each mm-hmm. month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Now, number four here is your page has poor on-page optimization. What does that mean? Yeah. So, Poor on page, well, on page optimization, I should say, whether it's good or bad, um, mm-hmm. it's a bit of a mouthful. Um, but luckily, it's actually pretty easy to fix. So I don't want to go into too much detail and kind of overcomplicate things because I think a lot of people um, get a bit overwhelmed by the terminology. And I think sometimes they feel that marketers, you know, talk with these fancy words to make themselves sound. Um, really intelligent, but essentially on-page optimization, just like I talked about keywords before, it essentially includes a number of actionable tactics that assist in improving your website's ranking on each page. So these things may sound a bit complicated, but title tags, meter descriptions, and XML sitemaps are just some of the items um, that, that, are in, that are part of on-page optimization, mm-hmm. uh, which can be adjusted um, by potential website developer or obviously someone who has website skills who might be more proficient really in focusing on, on that SEO and that SEM. But essentially what they will do is they will look into the back end of your website and depending on the keywords that you're wanting to rank for on each web page of your website, they'll obviously look at those other elements around the site where they can integrate those keywords into these title tags and these meter descriptions and these other areas um, that once you know what you're talking about, they're really easy to understand. But there are essentially different layers of your website uh, where that information can be added um, to help you with that ranking overall for those keyword or keywords that you're wanting to rank for. So business owners, you know, in equine businesses, they don't need to, you know, overcomplicate things. They don't have to learn all about SEO. Obviously, you want to know a little bit about it so that you can choose the right person or company to work with. Um, but, you know, this on-page optimization, it can be given to a website developer or an SEO consultant. And, you know, it depends on the size of your website. If you have, you know, say a one-page website or, you know, just a handful of pages, it might be simply a, an afternoon or a day's worth of work. If your website's really complicated or you have lots of products and services, for example, you know, it might be a couple of days worth of work. But the great thing is it sounds complex um, and it is to a degree, but it actually can be fixed and then it can be working for you without having to be changed all the time. Wait, can you hear anything? No, that's because we're waiting for someone with a good quality horse product to be advertised here. If that's you, then contact us. Horse chats at horsechats.com and we'll send you the details. Thanks. I think particularly for horse people and, and horse people who ride and compete, who are always looking for a coach to give them the edge. They want to go to the best coach mm. in their area. So it's sort of like this. If the website's got poor on-page optimization, I think as a horse person, you know, we want to be outside with the horses. So the poor mm. on-page optimization that's really when we need a professional to help us, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, when it, when you're a business owner, marketing is obviously such a crucial part of business and you should uh, really invest, you know, yourself into learning about marketing. You know, you are one of the best marketers for your business possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that being said, you know, sometimes at the end of the day, your time is probably better spent doing other elements of your business as well. That's not to say that you shouldn't do your own marketing. I do believe that people can and should yep. um, or do elements of their marketing. Um, but sometimes, you know, you're better off looking after your customers. You know, say, for example, you're a writing coach. You are far better place to spend your days and your energy in the arena, you know, at the show supporting your writers as opposed to in the office, you know, after hours trying to cram things in, you know, when you already have very limited time, that's really someone outside the business who understands all of this and doesn't need to be told. Um, can obviously come in, work with you, explain what they're doing. They should be really open and transparent and obviously get that work done for you so you don't have to spend your time doing things um, that you can easily outsource. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically what we're doing here is giving people enough of an idea so that then when they do get someone who's going to work alongside them and help them, they've got enough of an idea to know what they're working towards. 
That's right. And it's really important. I think a big challenge with marketing in general, um, and well, just doing business in general probably as well, but you don't know what you don't know. Mm. And I'm a firm believer that it's all about having all the answers, actually about asking the right questions. And I've learned that in business many times, um, you know, as, as an individual person myself. Um, so I think it's really important for a business owner to have a general understanding of things such as SEO and SEM because they need to know if it's important for their business, because if you're not too sure how it works, um, obviously you might not be using it in your business, which means you could be missing out on on making more sales. Um, but also you run the risk of also setting yourself up with unrealistic expectations. And that's a big part of moving to number one ranking on Google, um, particularly, you know, if there are other people trying to do the same. And we're about to go into that in the next point. But you know, you are up against um, a lot of challenges and it's not an overnight uh, fix. Yep. Um, you know, often SEO, we really set up the expectation for our clients that it's going to take 12 months, normally a minimum, um, to see that movement, especially if you're talking about a website that's on page four or five. Mm. You know, it's going to take, you know, several months to generate that movement, uh, let alone, you know, depending on the keywords that they're ranking for. If you think about, you know, going back to that, you know, horse riding facility example, the riding school example, you know, particularly in some locations where, you know, there's a lot of riding schools, again, you know, you're going to be up against competition um, very, very clearly. And you've got to look at how you can use SEO strategically um, to get to that number one position. And then obviously also to stay there. I was going to say number five, that we've got a reason that your website isn't ranking in Google is the competition. You know, there is competition and it's tough. So what do you do? Mm, What do you do if you're in an area where there are a lot of other places that are just horses or or I should say livery or boarding for international people? Yeah, yeah. It's honestly a combination of factors. So what I don't really go into in this in this interview, and which again we can probably mark this as another topic, but what I mentioned before, so search engine marketing or SEM. So this is what's um this is where websites um, use Google AdWords. So they use the marketing platform of Google um, mm-hmm. to actually pay for their positions. So often when people go into Google, say, for example, you're searching uh, for a pair of new riding boots and you decide to go onto Google um, to start looking into your options as a customer, you'll often find that there are going to be a number of websites which actually have ads. So they have the little word saying ad um, and they're displayed a little bit differently in the search engine results. And those are the businesses that are paying for that number one position. Now, when I say number one, obviously being like the first on the first page is great um, and obviously the prime spot, but as long as you're top five, and I did say this before, really just top five and definitely on the first page. Worst case scenario, you are further down the list, but you don't want to be past the first page. Um, That really is, you know, the absolute bare minimum. Um, But essentially, we can delve into this in in a different interview, but essentially search engine marketing ultimately might be where you actually are going to get those results that you're looking for. And that's not um, a a bad thing uh, because the great thing about, you know, paying for placement, um, it's not necessarily hugely expensive. It's going to come down to those keywords because you do have to pay um, a different amount for keywords. Um, But also bearing in mind that, you know, if you do it correctly and you get that position, then you can maintain it and it's going to happen a lot faster. So someone who's doing it organically, and slowly, slowly adding content to their website, they might see that movement over a period of 12 months or more. Someone who pays for that placement, they're going to see that, you know, very, very quickly, you know, essentially the same day if they're paid for an ad, for example, they're going to get that position on Google very fast. Um, but you do have to sometimes pay to play. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that's the first five of the lessons for search engine optimization for horse business owners. How about five ways to improve our website ranking? So um, this is what we're doing over the that 12 months, the steps there. The first one is get clear on your keywords. Mm-hmm. So this is coming back to really what I've been trying to drive home. Um, Actually, Sophie, can I just interrupt here just to clarify in my own mind? So Ideally, the horse business owner, they've got an idea of what they want on their site. They would have already done all the good quality photos and they'd already have their information written out. Then they would go to someone professional Mm -hmm. to set it up so that they've got the correct on-page optimization and it's set up correctly. Mm -hmm. But then they Mm -hmm. could get it handed back to them so they then 
could do a lot of the work over that time themselves. Is that right? You know, because writing a specialist, you know, a blog post on horse lessons and terminology, you don't really want someone to do it because that's your personality, you're part of the business. You know, sometimes you want to have a bit of a hand there. You know, you may not want to do the technical part, but you do want to do the information that you're putting out to the public. Yeah, that, that's correct. And and that's the thing that, that um, equine business owners need to be thinking about. You know, you don't have to feel that you have to look yourself into it with an agency or an individual consultant at all. Mm. Um, you can really pick and choose how you want to outsource um, elements like SEO. So, um, that being said, if you if you have a great website developed, um, you know, the imagery is great, the content's great, it's mobile responsive, all those things we've talked about in another recent podcast interview, um, you know, those things are, are great. Um, and then you can obviously get someone to come in and work on that SEO strategy and optimize every single element of your website to give you the best opportunity to increase and improve your ranking. Yep. Um, now, if you want to, if you feel confident writing your own blog, um, again, you might find if you have a good relationship with that agency or individual that you send them each blog post. Say, for example, you write a blog a month. That might be just 12 times you touch base with them over a year to get them to optimize um, each okay, blog post. Good. And even maybe yep. upload it onto your website, for yep. example. So it's so, a, bit of a bit of a team effort there. Yeah, that's right. Mm. You don't need to outsource every element. I do find that with, you know, the 75-plus clients that I have worked with at Archer Creative, um, it's often a time factor. And, again, it's just coming back to uh, that limitation um, that a lot of business owners have. You know, they've got so many different responsibilities pulling at their attention that often the reason that someone outsources blog writing is simply because they don't have enough time. Yep. Um, and yep. someone okay. who is a good copywriter, they're going to be fast and they're mm. going to be efficient. Yes, yes. So that ends up being good value, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm. All right. Mm. All right. That's correct. So, so we were talking about the number one, getting clear on your keywords. Yeah, so obviously looking at keywords. So what you can do essentially is you can do keyword research in Google. Um, there are also a number of different programs that you can use to assist you, maybe for free. Uh, if you're not confident, just have a chat with someone uh, reputable um, that you have a, a good relationship with and, um, and get their support. So essentially, having a strategy for a website, you know, a keyword strategy is pretty much as important as having a website. So um, especially because, as we talked about, you know, competition is rife. So a solid website strategy, um, I will actually mention here, though, not only covers keywords, um, but all of those ways that we've talked about in the first half of this podcast um, in which they'll be used to improve your website ranking. So not just the copy that you read, um, but those title tags, those media descriptions and those other areas of on-page factors. So keywords, uh, as I've explained, they form the foundation of every page on your website from your home to your blog post. So you should always have uh, possibly one keyword in mind. That being said, you might actually develop a strategy in your business where you have secondary keywords also scattered throughout your website. Mm -hmm. And the benefit of doing that is actually, again, to improve your website ranking. So this is where it's really a good idea to to work with someone who knows what they're doing um, because they can focus on that one main keyword and then use those other on-page factors to bring in other keywords um, that that are going to help towards that end goal. So that's just a really important thing to keep in the back of your mind that it might not be a bad idea even just working on the strategy, the keyword research and those on page optimization elements um, to get them done by someone who really knows their stuff. If you're an equestrian coach or a horse riding instructor, or even if you aspire to be one, have a look at the free video series for horse riding instructors on the Horse Chats website. Go there now. Have a look. Horsechats.com. All right. Now, the second one that we want ways to improve our website ranking, we talked about it a bit earlier, was starting to build the links. So for someone that's got a new website, How can they start to build the links? Like we know what happens if it's unethical, but how can we actually start to build the links over that period? Mm, mm. So essentially what I really want to say here, um, and, you know, this is just my perspective as a marketer and, um, you know, certainly there are other ways to go about it, but I think that building links, you know, actually really aligns closely with PR. And when I say PR, Obviously, I'm in public relations, but what I mean by that isn't just traditional PR in the sense that, you know, you want to get um, one of your articles published in the press, but also uh, this idea that PR ultimately is about building relationships. It's about 
forming opportunities with traditional media, for example, whether it's print or online, um, to build those links. It's about forming relationships with bloggers or influencers um, to build links. Uh, and it's also about creating opportunities um, for other people who might find your website content to be really valuable, uh, which naturally they'll be inclined to obviously engage with and share. So essentially, when you're looking at building links, um, you really should think of it with your PR hat on. You really should think that at the end of the day, building a link is really building a relationship. So one of the best ways to start uh, would be actually for a, a business to consider uh, obviously what content um, they think their customers would be interested in and put a plan in place to at least do a blog post a month, for example, um, at the very minimum. And then also think about, you know, other channels that might be available to them and simply reaching out. So, you know, if you're interested in a blogger or an influencer or even, you know, a traditional media outlet um, in the horse industry, there's certainly no harm in getting in contact with those people. You might not get something straight away and, and you might not always get something for nothing but that can really help to obviously drive people to potentially link to your content um on the same vein if you've got a really great blog or for example if someone quite well known uh with a profile has written a blog on your website another great way to buy blogs okay. uh, with guest contributors uh, is also, you know, because they have that profile, you might actually find it um, easier to get some to get some attention. So here, for example, uh, you might, you know, post this blog uh, as a link on your Facebook page, and and that will obviously create some engagement and open the opportunities uh, for people to link to that blog. Um, so essentially, it just really comes back to that golden rule about creating valuable content. You know, if it's really great content, um, people are going to want to read it, they're going to want to engage with it, and they're going to want to share it. So it's really quality over quantity a lot of the time um, in the same vein of PR and also thinking about how is this content, you know, great for your customer, but also, you know, how could it possibly attract um, interest? from other websites. So you've got to have a few different mindsets and a few different hats on. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, that's best with someone helping you with your strategy uh, could be really helpful. Yes, yes, yes. No, that makes sense. I'm sort of keep thinking, you know, going back to the riding school owner who they might do a workshop or something or do a clinic with a guest instructor. So they've got a guest instructor who's mm. quite well ranking, but the guest instructor then might contribute an article, then they can share it, then that's more valuable content. Yeah, yeah. No, that that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, and what I should say here, um, again, not to overwhelm people, because um, remembering, you know, if you have a particular business and you, you rank quite easily for the keywords you want to rank for, you don't necessarily have to go to these links. Really, when you have to get, you know, really a lot of links on your website and really get your keywords added out, we're really talking about those highly competitive keywords. So, again, just going back to your keyword research, once you work out the, the keywords that you're aiming for, um, you can then work out, okay, you know, if I'm having to pay, um, you know, several dollars, you know, in search engine marketing for this kind of keyword, that's a pretty good indication that it's going to be quite competitive organically. Mm -hmm. So, yep, you can definitely, by all means, take a year to get there. Um, but, you know, for some websites, even taking a year isn't enough. They do have to go to, to bigger lengths um, and, and go down the route of, you know, multiple links and multiple keywords to get that number one position. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, the third one, in the five ways to improve your website ranking, the third one, which is actually number eight in our 10 lessons for search engine optimization for horse business owners, is understand your current position. Now, is that to do with the rankings? Is that what you mean? Or what do you mean by yeah, understanding yeah. your current position? Yeah, yeah. That's it. So, exactly that. So, obviously, your position. So, it doesn't matter, um, obviously, if you're on page one, that's great. You're already doing a great job and you can just maintain that. Um, but if you're on page four or five, you know, it's it obviously is a bit disheartening, but um, it's not necessarily an opportunity to, you know, a moment to despair too deeply. It's just simply your starting point. So, again, you know, this is where you can sit down and go, okay, my, I definitely need to be a number one on Google. I know that my customers are on Google. They're looking for a product or a service like mine. I know I have to be there to open up the opportunity to get the sale. So this is where you do that planning and you do those action items so that you can eventually get to that goal. So looking at your current position just simply simply means, you know, critically evaluating your website, 
making sure that your website's great and breaking it down and looking at each individual page. Um, obviously, you know, looking at how you're using those keywords, how are you using links, are you using them at all? And also looking at your competitors. So if you see that on page one of those search results, there's a business um, that is a direct competitor and you want to outcompete them, then obviously, you know, you can look at their website, you know, really, really pull it apart and, you um, have a look at the structure of their website, you know, the quality of their images. Um, you know, you, you can do um, also look at the, the page source and kind of understand, um, you know, how they've got their website to where it is and, and things like blog posts as well. So you can kind of see, you know, how are they how are they getting that, that position? How are they maintaining that position? So you can learn a lot from your competition, that's mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. All right. I think you can learn a lot from your competition in the competition arena. So learning a lot about your competition uh, in business, I think that's a good way to go as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We've talked about this number four, which is actually number nine. We've talked before about having your site mobile responsive, I think, but would you like to go over it again? Because number four in the ways to improve your website ranking is ensure that your website is mobile responsive. Yes, yes. So obviously um, a mobile responsive website, um, for those who are yet to come on board, it is absolutely essential. The world is becoming increasingly mobile. Most people, nine out of 10, I say have a smartphone with access to the internet and they expect to be able to see your website and use it really, really easily on their mobile phone or their tablet or their laptop, any kind of, you know, uh, mobile device that they expect it to, to display and perform well. So um, I have explained in previous podcasts um, how to test if your website is mobile responsive, but I would simply say to anyone listening who doesn't know what that means or isn't really sure if their website is mobile responsive is, is seriously just to go into Google and just um, – Type in what is a mobile responsive website and just really educate yourself. I think it's all well and good for me to to talk about what it is, but I think it's a really important step um, for someone to take to understand what a mobile responsive website is, what it should look like, and why it's important because it's all well and good for me to sit here and say you should have a mobile responsive website, Um, but I am simply saying that not to encourage people to use my services, um, but to understand that without a mobile responsive website, you have a very, very hard task ahead of you trying to rank on Google. Google wants to look after and take care of mobile responsive websites only, and you're going to have a really hard time if you're not willing to update your website to a mobile responsive website. Yeah. You know, as time goes on, I tend to use my mobile devices much more than I Mm. use my computer. You know, you're searching, you're out somewhere, I'll just have a quick look here, I'll just do this. And you just use your devices so much more. So if people are generally using devices much more, it makes it much more important, doesn't it? Yeah, that's exactly it. And I think also as well, you know, I know there are business owners um, that I've had conversations with over the years, you know, that that kind of rest on their laurels and think, oh, you know, I'm an old dog. I can't possibly learn new tricks. You know, I don't understand the internet and I don't want to go any, anywhere near it. It, it. That's not good enough. You know, you, you're not helping yourself if you're not willing to understand what these things are and why they're important. And, you know, certainly you can just outsource it blindly to someone, um, you know, that's reputable and trustworthy, of, of course. Um, but it's really important um, to take an interest in, you know, why the world is going this way because at the end of the day, you know, the digital world, um, the online world and the mobile world is where we're heading and if you're not keeping up with those changes, you're going to get left behind and you're going to be the one that's going to suffer and your business is going to suffer and your business and you are worth more than that. Oh, hang on a sec. Let me interrupt to let people know about the horse industry qualifications at onlinehorsecollege.com. If you have a look at the flexible options, there's online theory and the practical components can be completed by video or with a qualified expert in your area. That website again is onlinehorsecollege.com. Okay, thanks. Yep, yep. And it's taking an interest in your business. You know, it's it's all right to say exactly. no technology, but it's your business. And you want to you get the right people. You know, you want to get the right students. You want to get yep. the right people. Yep, yep. Otherwise, you just end up with a lot of people that aren't really open-minded 
because they're just going mm. with the old. Mm, mm. But also, also, you know, in addition to that, you know, if it's your business, it's your livelihood. Yes. And, you know, no one wants to, no one wants to work to, you know, no one wants to work to live. No one wants to live to work, sorry. They want to work to live. You know, the mm. purpose of having a business um, is not to, you know, give yourself a rod for your own back. It, it's hopefully, um, you know, in the long term, and it might be a long time coming, but it's hopefully to set you free. And financial freedom um, is what we all want, you know, when we run our own businesses. Um, and obviously when we work for other people as well, um, you know, we all want to be um, able to get the things we want out of life. And I think that, you know, that we have to think about when you're making an investment in your business. It's, it's looking after yourself and your family and your future. Yep, yep, for sure. All right, then, now the last one we've got, which is point number five for ways to improve your website ranking, but point number 10 for the 10 lessons for search engine optimization for horse business owners is to dedicate yourself to creating valuable content. Yeah, so this is the last one on the list, but I will I will say yeah, that, uh, you know, I haven't covered absolutely everything and I obviously haven't gone into immense detail around search engine marketing. I will say that all of the elements we've talked about, you know, the good things and the bad things, they all ultimately influence search engine marketing. Um, so they are part of uh, the puzzle. Um, and essentially, you know, this is really, you know, where I wanted to end um, is dedicating yourself in your business, whether you were doing it yourself or you're engaging someone else, is to create great content. Um, so, you know, as I've mentioned earlier, elements like on-page optimization, once they're done properly, they will actually continue to work for your business. You may want to revisit them, you know, every six to 12 months to make sure they're working um, effectively still, you, still for you. Um, but when it comes to creating content, you know, that's a month in, month out task. So it's really important um, to always have your end customer in mind and be thinking about what kind of content um, do they need to know about my business and also what kind of content could I add um, to enrich their lives and to add value and give them helpful information. So regular blog posts are a great way uh, to start. And obviously, you know, that, that regular addition of content to your website is going to help to advance your ranking and not only get you to number one, uh, but certainly help you to keep uh, that number one ranking as well. And not only that, that valuable addition and the blog post, that's good for your customers. Even if it wasn't mm. about search engine marketing, it's doing the right thing for your students or your potential students or your customers to give them a bit more information about the knowledge that you've got and um, areas that can help them within their horse hobby or business or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's exactly it. And I think as well, you know, um, I always like to think that, you know, content is the cornerstone of credibility, but it's also thinking about, you know, when it comes to to marketing, which, you know, ultimately want to lead into sales, yep. is it's not about just closing the sale to close the sale so you can, you know, get another dollar in your back pocket. Obviously, that's the part of business. But um, it's also about really asking yourself when it comes to marketing, how can you add value? Yep. Because businesses that are willing to help people and solve their problems, they're going to be the ones that are successful. Okay, good. Good. All right. Can we summarize there now? If we go, first of all, we've got 10 lessons for search engine optimization for horse business owners. We've got the five reasons your website isn't ranking high on Google. So would you be able to just summarize those five reasons, please, Sophie, before we move on to the next bit? Yeah, for sure. So the five reasons your website isn't ranking high in Google. So the first that we touch on is your website has been penalized by Google. This is thankfully very rare, but just really important to be aware that you are always using ethical SEO practices. And that simply means doing your research and working with someone who's reputable. Number two is your website incorporates links ineffectively. So keywords and links are really the foundation of an SEO strategy, which leads into search engine marketing. Uh, so really making sure that any inbound, uh, internal, and even outbound links, but I am particularly talking inbound links, making sure that they are quality and that they are genuine uh, from genuine websites um, around there on the web. Number three is your content may be too thin. So for some websites, 
it's important to have quite a number of uh, pieces of content. So several hundred to several thousand words per page if it's a really competitive keyword or keywords that you're trying to rank for. Um, but also, not only that, but also looking at keeping your website up to date with regular added content. Um, and one of the best ways and the easiest ways is blog posts, which you can also integrate that keyword research. Number four is your website has poor on-page optimization. A bit of a mouthful, uh, but quite easy to implement and something you can almost set and forget at least for, you know, six to 12 months at a time. So this is looking at other elements um, in addition to the copy uh, that is on your homepage and your about page, your service or product pages, for example. These are other smaller elements of your website where keywords are also integrated to help you rank for those keywords. And number five is competition is tough. And that simply means that for some businesses in the equine world, there's a lot of competitors out there in the market. And it not be, may not be in just your local area or just Australia-wide. You may also have international competitors as well. And that means there's a lot of people um, all vying for that number one spot on Google. So just being aware of your competitors and looking at ways that you can obviously remain competitive by doing it ethically and doing it correctly. All right, thanks for that. That was the five reasons your website isn't ranking high on Google. But now we're going to look at the ways to improve your website ranking. So if you could summarize those, Sophie, that'd be great. Of course. So number one is getting clear on your keywords. So keyword research you can do easily on your own on Google. Don't be shy to jump on YouTube and and start to learn how to do that. There's also a number of free tools that can help you as well. But if you're not sure, at least have a conversation with someone who who does know what they're talking about. You might find with a bit of a helping hand, you can actually do a fair bit of the work yourself. Uh, Number two is to start building links. So as I mentioned, keywords and links are really important at working together to show Google that each page on your website is relevant and popular. So links is a long-term strategy. It's going to take time to create content uh, that people are going to want to reference back to, uh, but also, you know, think of it as a bit of a a PR part of your business, Uh, you know, particularly if you're looking to get links from bloggers or influencers or other reputable websites such as the media uh, pointing back to your content. Just bearing in mind that not every website needs to have a million links. Um, it's just being aware of your keyword strategy and obviously having a strategy is really important. Number three is understand your current position. So by that, we simply mean where are you on Google? If you have identified a particular keyword or phrase that you want to rank for in number one spot, are you on page two? Are you on page five? Are you on page 10? That's just simply your starting point to work out how far you have to go to get to number one position. And you may have to actually do more search engine marketing or Google AdWords and actually pay for that placement if you want to get there really quickly. And you can do that essentially within a day by launching your own advertising. Number four is ensure that your website is mobile responsive. If you're not sure what I mean, type into Google right now, what is a mobile responsive website and really start to learn about why it's important. At the end of the day, Google wants to look after the people using their platform and make sure that they're presenting websites that are up to date, uh, have great information and that display well on mobile devices. If your website isn't mobile responsive, it's really time to get a move on and make it so. And number five is dedicate yourself to creating valuable content. Content is a really important part of any website, not only describing what you do and keeping that accurate, but also adding value to the lives of your customers and your potential customers. That'll add to building up that credibility and that trust. So creating content in the form of blog posts is a really great way that you can keep your website up to date and you can help to get that website ranking of number one. All right. Now, we did talk a bit about people who weren't interested in improving their website. They were, you know, didn't like a lot of change. But really, it's the open minded people who want to progress and go forward and move with the times that will keep increasing their business. And we talked a bit about doing it yourself or having a partner to assist and support you. And I know, Sophie, that you do this. And while we appreciate the education and we know that there's lots of people who aren't going to use the services, because they might already have someone, it may not work out. But for people Mm. who do want to use Mm. your services, tell us a little bit about what you can do to help and how they can contact you. 
Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. So my business is called Archer Creative and it is an equine-specific marketing agency based in Brisbane. Now, we are based in Brisbane, but we do work with clients all over Australia and internationally as well. Now, Archer Creative is a full-service marketing agency. So working on your website, creating a website, maintaining your website, um, assisting with hosting, and then also SEO and SEM are just some of the services that we offer. So if you have any questions about your website, if you think it needs some work done to it, or you're not too sure if you're taking the right approach with your website, don't be don't hesitate to get in touch and give me a call or send me an email. So you can contact me on 1300 077 126 within Australia. Uh, obviously, just add your prefix if you're calling in internationally. Um, If you are international or obviously certainly in another state and it's not the right time of day to get in touch during your working day, just send me an email. So that's Sophie, S-O-P-H-I-E, at archercreative.net.au. Feel free to have a look at our website, which is www.archercreative.net.au. You can also find us on Facebook and you can also find myself on LinkedIn. And on LinkedIn and on Facebook and on my website, I'm always trying to create uh, new information and really put out helpful resources uh, and tips uh, to the equine business owner. So those are some of the channels um, that you can connect with us on. Uh, But just look for Sophie Barrington if you're looking to connect with me on LinkedIn. I'd love to connect with you and obviously would love to have a chat. All right. Thanks, Sophie. And for those who didn't quite get those details, it'll be on horsechats.com slash Sophie Barrington 6, which means that Sophie's been with us for six months now, you know, giving us great content, great information for horse business owners. So thank you, Sophie, for that. You're welcome. (laughs) Otherwise, you can go to horsechats.com, search for Sophie, S-O-P-H-I-E, or search for Barrington, and you'll find those details as well. All right. Thank you, Sophie, for coming again, and we'll catch up with you next month. What have we got in store for next month? Ah, for next month, that is a good question. Uh, Let me have a quick look. So next month, for the month of November, we are talking about how to get your horse business into the press. And isn't that perfect? I was just talking about here. Uh, So five do's and five don'ts. Mm -hmm. And then uh, just looking ahead to December as well, obviously looking at the Christmas season, the holiday season. It doesn't necessarily have to be about Christmas. Uh, We're looking at the season for marketing. So five fun ways to engage your customers in the holiday period and five clever gift ideas um, to show your Christmas spirit or to show your holiday spirit. Very good. Very good for all of it. All right, Sophie, we'll see you next month. Thanks for your time. Perfect. Thanks, Anna. See you next month. (laughs) Bye. Now, if you're still there, you probably know that I'm absolutely passionate about education within the horse industry. That's why I host this podcast. My other venture is Online Horse College. Have a look now at onlinehorsecollege.com and I'll see you over there. Remember that our comments and instructions are general in nature and do not take into consideration your individual horses or your individual ability and circumstances. If you enjoyed this podcast, then please leave your comment below 